Another boring sanding session just completed. I've got everything sanded down to 150 grit to make it nice and smooth. Now MDF is a bit of a sponge, so it's really important to use a primer sealer undercoat. I'm gonna put at least one coat, I might even do two if I've got the time. See how thickly it goes on. This one reckons the British paints so that you only need one coat, but again, we'll have a quick look after the first is done. I'm gonna paint these before I glue them in just because it's easier to get the nice flat surface. You can do it with a roller. Yeah, look, it been, seems to have gone on pretty thin, so I think I'll do two coats. For the side panels, I've put them back in and just used a pencil to run around where the glue needs to go, because I don't want to get here, 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 and here any of the paint, because it'll stop the PVA glue from sticking when I put them into the frame. Oh sweet, that only took a few seconds each board, literally, it's going really fast. Liking that British Paints 4-in-1. Now for this bad boy, first coat. Well, it's pretty early in the morning on Christmas Eve, and I have got my work cut out for me today. Overnight, the undercoat on the main part of the box, and the boards has been drying, and it looks beautiful, two coats on there. Today, first thing, last few embellishments to go onto the lid to match the chamfer on the corners of the box. I'm gonna chamfer off the sides here. Luckily, no pocket screws in the way this time. And then I just had the idea a few seconds ago, this is gonna be the football stadium, as it were. The mad keen fans at Sydney FC are known as the Cove. So I'm gonna get my giant Cove bit and I'm going to route out some seating along here just for a bit more profile to make it look cool. Then it's sanding on with the undercoat there, on with the sky blue there, and hopefully by this evening I'll have the second coat on too, and this box will be done. The last thing that's going to be pushing me is getting this playing field ready. So get the green in, mask it all up with the tape, make the players, and make the ball. No time to waste, let's get cracking. The Cove bit is actually the largest that I own and won't fit on the regular trim base, so I'm going to have to use the table base to do this job. Gotta be careful, it's a big cut. That looks great. I've got to get my head around my router movement direction. Those first few runs, I did the wrong way and then I could feel it running and it was in control, but it's just not the safest thing to do. And then you come back the other way. Did a few passes just because it is such a deep cut, but it's meant to look like seating in the stadium and I think it does. Fantastic. Flip it over and that should hopefully be the last cut involved in this project. Well, that was another big sandy session. I used the vacuum to get most of the dust off. But you can see here, even after that, it takes quite a bit of brushing outside to clear off all that powder so the paint will stick better. My local Bunnings is not too bad, it's not a huge one, but it's pretty good. And whenever you want to get paint for a project that you don't have a specific colour in mind, make sure the first thing you do is go to the bargain bin. This is Torbman's Endure, it's a water-based inside paint and it's pretty expensive usually. It's about 40 bucks for this two litre, one litre, I should say, can. However, this was actually very, very lucky. I needed sky blue and navy blue in order to represent the two colours of Sydney FC and I scored both of them straight out of the bargain bin. 10 bucks a can instead of $80 the two, I only had to cop up 20. The bloke was even nice enough because they were fairly light tints to add some more color and bring them closer to the ones I wanted. Then he asked me what it was for. Turns out he was an FC fan and he loved the idea I was making toy box for my nephew to indoctrinate him. So my $10 cans suddenly turned into 
$5 cans and I paid 10 bucks for two litres of a good quality paint. That is just a Merry Christmas to me. So make sure you check out that bargain bin at Bunnings. You can get ridiculously good deals as long as you're not super picky on the exact colour. Next plan of attack, I've got my lid undercoated 320 grit sandpaper in between two coats of the coloured paint. The big panels, the inside of the box and the outsides are going to be the navy blue as well as the trim around the lid and all of the frame is going to be the Sydney sky blue. Then I'm going to do the decorations on the lid and I can see myself doing that rather late this evening because I still got to get a second coat of undercoat. All right, let's give this a crack with my bargain basement bunnings paint. That will literally do it. And this is something else quite handy too. It's called tack cloth. It's a microfiber cloth and it's super, super sticky, used for cleaning. And you can even feel it sort of trying to grip onto your hands. It'll collect all the fine little particles of dust that I just created. All right, let's get into some navy blue. Don't like wasting any paint. So I use the clean roller, clean the tin, and the stirring stick. If I'm a tight ass of epic proportions. It's been a really long day and I'm still thinking I'm gonna have a late night to actually get this finished. Construction's pretty much done, let's do a painting tour. There is the main sky blue box which has got two coats of the lovely sky color on there. This is the lid with uh, the Western Sydney Wanderers red and the sky blue seats, the goals and the green pitch. It looks a bit patchy because that's only one coat in and that's probably what I'm gonna be working on this evening. In my secret storeroom, I have got the side navy panels, and as we wait for the light to adjust coming outside in the brightness, and my shadow, these are the two chalkboard panels, which I am three or five coats in. The best thing about that is, there are only two minutes between coats, so by the time I've taken this video, I can do number four, the number five. The product I have is Dulux Duramax Magnetic Chalkboard. So, after five coats, apparently, not only will it be a chalkboard, but I should be able to stick magnets to it as well, which is pretty damn awesome. That's five coats. Let's see if we can pull off this tape and see what it looks like. Beautiful. There's a quick tip. Always pull your tape off, if possible, when the paint is still wet. Otherwise, you could risk peeling the edges. Christmas Eve 2018, about 20 to 9 at night, and in true Fix It Fingers style, we're leaving things to the last minute. But I do believe I can actually get this project finished on time, so I'm going to persevere, even if it's a late evening, to make sure I can deliver it on Christmas Day, unlike the twins' birthday present. I had to go into panic stations there during the glue up. So of course I could clamp around the top. That wasn't a problem. That board's so tight, I don't think I even need clamps. I'll probably throw one for good measure. The problem was down the bottom. So this gap here was very, very visible. And what I've done is I put my two fairing strips. So those two outside packs are covered in packing tape. And then I have malleted in some wedges to force hopefully even pressure against the bottom because that's the main surface area where it's gluing and there is some glue touching paint which is not ideal. So uh, well that's what I'm going to have to do. Here's hoping that when I knock out those chocks in the morning it all stays together. And we're just about done which is good because I was any later the wifey would murder me on Christmas Eve and that's not fun for families. I had to show you this awesome 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 thing. Does it have a name on there? Shoreline. 
Uh, got it from my dad when we did the feature wall, which is where I stole this paint from actually. And I just need to show you what you do. So that's my glue brush, the silicate one. I just use it to load up the paint on here. You can be really generous. And then look at the edge it gives you. This is a final run on the playing field. So it's designed for doing the edges of walls. And on this, I decided instead of the brush, it's gonna give me that nice grassy gloss effect too. You just line it up against the edge and drag it across. and it gives you a near perfect joint. Oh, little buddy, you're gonna regret doing that. Get off me paint. However, I'm gonna call that done. There's my glue up, there's my lid. The only thing that won't be ready for tomorrow are the six little players and the football, but honestly, I can deliver those at another day. The important thing is the box, once dry, is finished, and I'm very, very happy with that. Wifey is uh, well correct in saying that my planning needs a lot of work. However, the result here, I think, shall be great. We've got the Western Sydney Wanderers colours. We've got the Sydney colours ready for a grand old match. If I have time in the morning, I might paint on some lines. That'll do for now, though. Good night. Merry Christmas. It's looking really nice. It's not going to be 100% finished. There'll be a few little touch-ups, but at least it is in a deliverable state. So we're going to load this into the car in a minute and go off to enjoy Christmas lunch with the family and the presents. One thing I really wanted to do this morning, just to convey this is a soccer-themed pitch because there was not a lot other than the colours to do so, is get some lines down. So I've got my centre one marked, and what I'm doing is putting the painter's tape down, run the white paint over it and peel it off. I'm only doing one coat because that slight transparency actually looks like, well, grass and the real lines on a football field. Then we'll have to come back and do the players in a ball another day, but at least this one was almost done for Christmas. I love this bit. Well, the box did get delivered on Christmas and it was very well received. However, I decided to take it home to do a few little touch-ups, paint the pieces and just correct a few small faults with it. Um, so the lid has already taken off some of the paint. I think it's because the paint was only 24 hours old. It wasn't quite hardened up yet. So we'll do some touch-ups there. A few little bits like my uh, spray painting wasn't quite accurate. Got to fix that too. My biggest concern, however, was this actual chalkboard paint because you can probably even see the texture there. It is just like chalk. It comes off and uh, that's obviously not ideal when you've got a toddler at that height. However, fortunately, I found just uh, wiping it down with a damp rag on the other side has corrected that problem. So just grabbing the brush, going to brush it all off. Look, you'll see how much comes off here. Watch this. I mean, it's just bloody everywhere. So I'm not sure if it's meant to do that, but fortunately not too difficult a fix, although it does kind of stain all through there. Uh, after that, just add a few more bits of decoration to the lid, and I'm also gonna put some rubber down in here, because you can see how marked that got. Again, the paint wasn't completely dry, but with hard toys going in and a non-gloss paint, that does need some protection too. This step is probably completely unnecessary, but I knew I had this piece of foam rubber from an old job lying around that had no real other purpose. So I'm going to pat the bottom by just snipping off a bit and conveniently, it was exactly the right size. God, this thing comes in handy. See if it fits. Lovely. Because the lid's going to get handled so much and it's going to be literally used as a playing field for the soccer game, I'm going to put a coat of gloss clear lacquer over the top of it just to protect it because this is wall paint that I've used and it's not the toughest surface. For the main box it'll be fine, but high traffic area, hard to finish. cut out these six little blocks actually made them a lot smaller than I first tried them out and they're going to be the players that will stand on the field there'll be three for each side so you can sort of block the flick shots of the football 
I should also probably cut a football. To shape those, I'm going to use the angle grinder disc sander with my nice new sanding pad. Yes, I know my fingers are getting pretty close to that, but it is just sandpaper after all. So they're all going to be just really rough, obviously. And uh, yeah, little groove just so we can see some feet. And smooth over all the edges, rounded over the top. Six little dudes to come. Painting those tonight's going to be fun. For the footballs, I'm going to make two. Just cut off some tiny scraps of the 9mm. Found a convenient circle. These obviously don't have to be actually round. You could use a hole saw for this, but I do not have one. And then I can just sand those down to size too. Going to have to be, uh, <laughs> that's definitely not circle. Going to have to be slightly wary of these around my one year old, but honestly, I think this part of it currently is more for my brother. Getting close to finishing the game pieces for the tabletop soccer on the toy box. Just had to cut these out. I'm going to place them over my almost discs like so and then paint on the black stencils. I've got my Western Sydney Wanderers and my Sydney FC pieces. Pretty happy with those. I think I'm just going to leave them blank like that. They look fine. Got some numbers on the back of them. Quick spray. Give it a few seconds to dry. I really don't want this to be very strong. So I've got four sides to do, and if I can reuse the same cutting, that'll save me a lot of time. Alright, now the tricky bit. Try to get this off without tearing it. Hey, winning. Check that out. That's awesome. Wait for that to dry, flip it over, and repeat. Bondor clear coat is all dry, so a final sand with some 320 grit will make the plane surface nice and smooth, ready for the game pieces. Lovely. Sydney FC versus Western Sydney Wanderers on the flick footy table, ready to roll. Oop, face the right way. So the way that the game works is that each player takes it in turn having a kick and moving a player. And you can use the sides as bumpers. Only rules are that you can't put your player directly in front of your goals in those squares. <laughs> Good defending. So the trick is to try and position your guys out of your own way that work out where the next kick from your opponent might come. So they've got a nice space straight through here. Goal! I'm really happy that I decided to put that clear coat over the top. It's a high gloss coat and because the paint I used was matte, it really has made a difference, not only to the look of the box, but it just feels so much more protected from young hands. You could avoid all this, of course, by using a gloss hard wearing paint to begin with, and that would probably have made your life a little bit easier. But again, for five bucks worth of paint, I've done good. Let's finish this off. Flooring, just so the hard toys don't make a whole bunch of noise. Lid. That chamfered edge is really assisting in my not-so-perfectly square lid fitting onto the box. Playing pieces. Made two footies, actually. And, of course, we've got the magnetic blackboard here. Let me grab a magnet. Hang on. There's a little magnet that I use for catches, and it will stick. So, you know, for a magnetic paint, that's something new to me. Works well. Chalkboard. And the last feature, of course, are these side panels where you can put your very precious reading material safely away like so. 
Really, really proud of this project. It's easily the biggest thing that I have built to date and probably the biggest thing I'm going to build for a while, to be honest. It did take a lot of work. I had it mostly ready before Christmas. I just needed some finishing touches. Now, on the 12th of January, I'm going to go deliver it to my brother today where he can play the tabletop footy until Zachariah, my nephew, is old enough to appreciate the nuances of the game. Very, very happy to have this project walking out the door. It's been amazing, good fun, and a huge learning experience. Got to play with heaps of new tools, all my Craig gear, the pocket hole joinery system. Ah, oh, that's just so easy, loving that. And uh, oh, just Carver Tech as well. Little shout out for helping me supply all that equipment. Not that they sponsored it, but it was the only place I could find it, and I got really good service, so a free plug for them. All right, guys, well, I think that's what I'm gonna do next. Maybe some French cleats, just a few small ones for the wall. Get rid of some of the mess. See ya.